Coming up, super cool surgery in your own backyard. A breakfast trick that'll have your cereal bouncing back for more. Stick a super gross pus filled boil on your face. Or stick a teaspoon right on the tip of your nose. How neat is that trick? Oh, and my spoon keeps falling down. <laughs> Funny you say that, because falling down is exactly the problem Daniel and Ashley have to avoid, because they're about to build a really cool explorer shelter in their backyard. Ashley and I are daring explorers, camping out for the night in the wilderness. We've got everything we need right here. Warm clothes, torches, sleeping bags. What about the most important thing of all? The food. Us adventurers get pretty hungry out in the wild. Now, the first thing to do is get the tent up. Ashley, where have you put the tent? You were supposed to bring the tent. Great, you just keep munching on that food. We can't camp without a shelter. Looks like I'm gonna have to save the day with a brilliant idea. To the explorer's shed. There's always something useful in there. This is good. A tarpaulin and some rope. Maybe we could tie it up to a tree and make a shelter. We've got one tree, but there's nothing to tie the other end of the rope to. How can we make a cosy shelter without using trees? We're going to have to build some sort of frame and then tie the tarpaulin over it. Let's get to it. <laughs> it's Halloween and I've got the coolest costume ever. Yellow teeth, check. Scary claws, check. Monster mask. Uh-oh, my monster mask. I can't find it. Oh well, I'll just have to think of something else to make me look gross. Hmm. Maybe something that looks like pus from a festering saw. Yep, that's gross. I need some cotton buds and petroleum jelly, tissues, food colouring and a couple of egg cups. I can feel a sudden rash of festering boils coming on. First a little red food colouring to make a nasty infection. Now for the perfectly putrid pus. I'll mix a dollop of petroleum jelly with a few drops of yellow food colouring. On it goes. Yuck! And to finish off, I'll use some tissue as skin. There. Now that's disgusting. Pus is actually a signal that your body is working to kill infection and bacteria. That gross looking yellow stuff is a cocktail of dead white blood cells, body fluids and bacteria. Ew! This will really freak the girls out. Though maybe I do have one too many boils. I know just how to fix that. Truly, truly disgusting. Excellent work, Patrick. And Daniel and Ashley look like they're doing a pretty good job with their explorer shelter too. Ashley and I are building a shelter to camp under for the night. These old gardening stakes from Dad's vegetable patch will be perfect for building a frame. Thanks, Dad. We take two branches and tie them together at the top with rope. This is our first A-frame. It'll support one end of the tent. Now we need another A-frame. Up she goes. Hold those in place, Ashley, and I'll get the top pole. That sits on top of the A-frames. Now we tie up each end, making sure the knots are really tight. It needs to be pretty strong so it doesn't fall down on us. We'll make the whole frame more secure by anchoring it to the ground with guy ropes. One end is tied to the frame and the other end to a peg hammered in the ground. That ought to do it. Time to get the roof on. Half the tarpaulin goes on each side of the top pole. I'll attach another guy rope to each corner and stretch it out tight. This will make sure the water will run off when it rains. And there we have it. Not bad at all. 
One problem, though. If it does rain, the ground will get very wet. Sorry, Ashley. I think we're going to need a raised sleeping platform. Morning, Michael. Hey, wait. You finished the cereal. I wanted some of that. Here's the deal. If I can make that rice cereal jump around without touching it, it's mine to eat. Do we have a deal? Good. Don't touch that cereal. I'll be right back. OK, I've got a plate of plexiglass, some wooden blocks and a woolen scarf. I'll need some of your ordinary, everyday rice cereal. Soon to be my rice cereal. Thank you. Now the plexiglass goes over the cereal with the blocks as supports. Then I just rub the woolen scarf on the plexiglass. And look what happens. Jump, my little rice cereal. Jump! Yes! Do your little dance, my tasty friends. The cereal jumps and sticks to the plexiglass because of static electricity. Rubbing the plexiglass with the woolen scarf makes it build up negative electrical charges. It then attracts the positively charged cereal. As the cereal absorbs negatively charged electrons from the plexiglass, it loses its positive charge and drops back down again. Woohoo! The cereal's all mine. You've got to get up pretty early in the morning to outsmart me. Now that is what I call clever. Well, clever is what we do best around here. In fact, we even have some talented backyard surgeons standing by to strut their stuff. We will now perform an incredibly delicate lung transplant. Meet my surgical colleague, Lara. This is going to be the wildest plastic surgery you've ever seen. First, I will remove the diseased lung. Just as I thought, dry as paper. Now for this patient's fabulous, shiny, plastic replacement lung. All we need is tape, a funnel, a balloon, and a plastic bottle. To make our artificial lung, we'll stretch the neck of the balloon over the narrow end of the funnel. Push the balloon and the funnel into the bottle. Good. Our new lungs are now in their chest cavity. Time to make the plastic bottle airtight. Great! Our artificial lung is almost ready. Squeeze in, squeeze out. That's what's going to happen when our patient's chest muscles make it breathe in and out. When I squeeze the bottle in, air is forced out of the balloon. This is what happens when our patient breathes out. And when I let go of the bottle, the balloon fills back up with air. That's how our patient will breathe in. Fraser's and Lara's clever replacement lungs work just like real ones. When we breathe, muscles in our tummies and chest expand and contract. When they expand, the pressure in our lungs drops and air rushes in. When we breathe out, the muscles relax and our chest cavity gets smaller. That forces air out of the lungs. If the muscles don't work, we don't breathe. Phew! For a minute there, I thought Lara was going to be next in line for a lung transplant. But first things first, let the surgery begin. Poor Jordan. He lost his balance on his skateboard today and hurt his ankle. Now he's as grumpy as a grizzly bear. Well, he loves chocolate biscuits. Maybe that'll cheer him up. No! This is serious. Come on, Jordan. You can wash it down with your favourite chocolate milk. Don't want milk either. Boy, this is trickier than I thought. There's got to be another way to put a smile back on his dial. I know how to make Jordan laugh and to show him how his balance isn't so bad after all. A few hot breaths on the spoon. And hey, presto, I can balance it here on the end of my nose. 
Yes, it's working. <laughs> not even grumpy old Jordan can help giggling at this trick. <laughs> I guess it's not every day you see someone with a spoon hanging on their nose. He must be feeling better if he wants to try it too. Hey, nice balancing, Jordan. <laughs> Scientists can't really explain this wacky balancing act. One theory is that a natural glue is created when the atoms in the metal spoon bond to the skin on our nose. Another theory is that the condensation from the warm breath dries to form a sticky union with the skin. Yep, John's got good balance after all. <laughs> and he's got his smile back too. Yes, I can do it as well. Now I can relax. And there'll be plenty of relaxing in Daniel and Ashley's Explorer Shelter too, as soon as they work out their sleeping arrangements. Ashley and I have made our very own shelter to sleep in for the night. Before we can settle in for a rest, we need to make a sleeping platform. It'll keep us up off the cold, wet ground. We're going to use a small tarpaulin folded around two strong poles. Using string, we tie the two edges together in the middle. Turn the thing over and we have a comfy stretcher ready to attach to the shelter. The two side poles go outside the A-frame of the shelter. The yellow tarpaulin holds the poles together and stops the stretcher from sliding down. Pretty clever, hey? Do you know what shape is making this structure strong? Yes, it's the triangle, the strongest shape. In triangles, the angles between the three sides cannot change once the triangle is built. Each angle is fixed by the side opposite. This makes it a very sturdy shape for a shelter. Boy, do I love camping. Sorry, Ashley. There's only room for one person in here. And this was my idea. Hey! My food supplies! Whoops, I thought that construction project would end on a happier note. Speaking of endings, we've reached the end of another show. See you, See next, you time. next time.